Let's build it. In this series, we're going to be taking a look at the general workflow that I take to make various things in 3D, depending on what you guys vote on in our community tab. It's not going to be a step-by-step -step guide necessarily, so don't go in expecting that exactly. Instead, I'm going to show you the things that I've learned, my failed attempts, my many, many failed attempts, and the workflow tools that I've discovered during my time spent on these 3D endeavors. So with that said, here's what I've learned when making a pivot desk lamp. The bevel and subsurface modifier combination can be incredibly powerful when working with hard surfaces. The first rule is that we need to make sure our bevel modifier is always above the subsurface modifier in our stack to be used properly. Otherwise, we're just going to be beveling an already smoothed out mesh and it's going to look kind of iffy. Now, the bevel modifier itself can be pretty intimidating, but that's only because it provides a lot of flexibility in what we can do with it. By default, it's going to bevel everything in our mesh, every single edge that we have. And in most cases, this is really not what we want at all. So instead, if we go down to limit method, we can go ahead and change it from none to weight. And so what weight is going to allow us to do, if we go into our 3D view in our end panel, we can determine which edges we want to bevel, as well as the overall bevel amount per each edge. So at a fundamental level, we can decide which edges are going to be beveled. This process is far more powerful than the typical edge loop method I found, because it's entirely non-destructive, which is awesome, since we're housing all of our changes within modifiers, which we can change whenever we want. For this particular project, I actually ended up using this workflow for about 95% of the asset just because of how flexible this approach actually is. When starting this piece, I felt it was best to start at the base and make my way towards the lamp shade. Giving myself a visual goal to work towards really helps my productivity personally when I can see my progress towards the predetermined goal. The base itself was nothing more than a simple cylinder that we get to use our bevel subsurf combo on. To provide slightly more visual intrigue though, I also added some loop cuts to cut into the mesh and add some of those crevices. Our next piece is the little support for the arm. Again, it's not much to write home about because it's a very simplistic cylinder and it's pretty much a standalone piece that we don't need to do any crazy mesh editing to to try and connect both it and the base. I also left the knob as a smooth surface rather than trying to replicate those grooves that you can likely see in the reference. But I do replicate the grooves later on on a different piece that could totally be used here as well. The toughest piece was definitely the support for the arm of the lamp. Its shape is just really incredibly awkward and not the easiest to model using the bevel subsurf technique. So while I used the bevel for a small portion of it, I had to fall back onto providing support loops to sharpen up the edges after we added the solidify modifier. Next, I wanted to create the metal support structures along the arm. These pieces weren't too much work as they're really only thin sheets. So by creating a plane, I moved all the vertices around to be my corners. And with them all selected, I was able to bevel them using the control shift B hockey. This pretty much took care of the corners for me, although I may have needed to move a few vertices around. I then added a solidify modifier to promote some weight to these pieces. I mirrored them across the Y axis and I added a subsurf modifier to smooth it out. I then realized that this actually highlighted my incredibly poor topology for these pieces, which I was able to save though by simply insetting the faces. I then set out to make the beams for the arms, which was likely the easiest piece of them all. I scaled down the cube on both the X and the Y axis to create this long rectangular prism. From there, I used the bevel subsurf dream team to round out my edges and smooth everything out. I even created instances of this beam in case I needed to change the length of any of these pieces, but I actually found that my vague eyeballed measurements were perfect fits. So I didn't end up getting to use it. Instead, the instanced piece just simply floats there for all of eternity, pondering its existence in a perpetually isolated state yearning for the opportunity to be a part of something bigger. 
From there, I had the misfortune of using the screw modifier when making the springs. However, once I inevitably remember how to use it, we're off to the races. We can make screws for days, and honestly, after the personal trauma this modifier's put me through, I'm trying to get a bang for my buck. With some finagling, I'm able to orient the springs into the correct positions, and then I need to make the connection points for the springs to actually attach to. So to do this, I use the exact same process as we've seen before, using our tag team modifier setup. Finally, I need to add some end pieces to the springs, and so I decided to use simple circle curves as they're easy to use and really easy to manipulate. Now, we've gotten to the head honcho. This piece is really no different than the rest of the asset using all the same modifiers we've used on previous objects. I decided that I would make the top pieces be the same mesh to make the modeling easier overall. However, I decided that I wanted to give the grooves of the switch a try and made it a separate piece instead. To make the grooves, I figured I could likely just manually bevel the edges, select the interior edges and scale them inwards, and see what happens. Overall, I was pretty happy with the result, although trying to find a way to do that in a more non-destructive manner is always going to be the goal for me. But since we've created the shade, now we need the lamp. I'll admit that light bulbs are actually far more oddly shaped than I initially thought. Uh, it turns out they've actually got more curves than the Michelin Man. Now, when working with completely cylindrical objects, there's always going to be the issue of knowing how to close it without getting that triangulation at the bottom. What I found to work has been adding a loop cut close to an engon at the apex of the shape so that it can flatten out the geometry just a little bit. However, your mileage may vary on that one, so just make sure you watch out. To finish out the bulb, I added a simple cylindrical object to be the connection piece, as it's going to be shoved into the lamp anyways and never really be seen. Finally, I extrude a face from within the lampshade to be used as the connection socket to stick our light bulbs into, and I just call it a day for that piece. Next, I needed to connect the lamp to the rest of our asset by making what I've labeled as the rotator. That's the technical term for it. I looked it up. Trust me, there's no need to fact check me on this. I created a cylinder with an inset on both sides, thanks to my handy dandy mirror modifier, and I extruded a face down the side facing the lamp shade. I made sure to weight my bevels, and on the face, I went about in setting a new face to be used as an extrusion. This way I could get a smooth rounded connection between the rotator and the arm rather than smashing a new piece of geometry into it. Then to create the connection piece on the lampshade, I simply duplicated some faces, added a solidify modifier, and slid the vertices down to fit a more accurate representation of the reference image. I then turned on auto smooth to give me some automatic smoothing groups since the solidify modifier really does a number on the normal sometimes. Now we're going to get into more of the nitty gritty details, which are going to be the selling factors of this asset. And it always seems that the last 5% really ties together the other 95%, sadly. And I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, I just work here. To make the knobs that we can find on the arm, I took another cylinder, I halved it, and then rotated it to produce a three leaf clover style outline. I used this to create the overall shape, again using the mirror modifier and then bevel subsurf combo it. Once I get those set up, it's ready to place. To follow that up, I need to make some screw heads for various areas of our arms. Now, you'd be talking silly talk if you thought that I was actually gonna model these by myself. Ain't nobody got time for that. Instead, I made the executive decision to use the bolt factory add-on that comes with Blender. Once loaded, I added a bolt and I play around with its parameters to get the desired look. Allen bit type with a dome head. Once I've got my screw set up, I went ahead and deleted the strip because I only wanted the screw head. I shade it smooth, turn on auto smooth again for some auto magic smoothing groups, and I get right to placing them. I want to make sure I'm placing them in edit mode too because I wanted to be able to mirror them across my Y axis for the other side as well. Finally comes what I believe to be the coolest part, where we get to live out the days where we disappointed our parents by not becoming a real electrician and instead sit in our rooms modeling fake wires. So any curve will do for this, but I prefer using paths. 
we can use the profile of another curve as the bevel for our wire object, so I use a circle curve to get the shape. In edit mode, I duplicate and reposition the circles to be beside each other and I scale them down. Now all I need to do is reposition the path to better fit my reference and it's pretty much home stretch from there. I also give the wires a little bit of tilt using control T to add some twists and turns to these wires. I then duplicate my wires in edit mode and continue to align them wherever my reference indicates I need them. Now I just need to take care of the last few connection pieces for the wire, starting with the node on the lamp shade. Using a simple cylinder, I'm able to create it easy enough. Since it's not an area of high priority for me, I didn't want to spend too much time on developing it either. Finally, I took a crack at modeling the inserts on the arms by using a cube and just pushing around some vertices. I was able to manage a decent enough looking shape, but again, nothing too detailed because it's not really a high priority item. Using our bevel subsurf combo, we can make it look instantly good with minimal efforts as well. Once I was happy with that, I duplicated the mesh to fit the areas that the wires connected with the arm, and I edited the mesh slightly to fit their new destination. To finish up, I made sure to go back to my springs, apply all of the modifiers, and join the pieces so that I could use the mirror modifier to get the springs on the other side of my lamp as well. With that all in place, I think it's safe to say that I'm pretty satisfied with the lamp. I put up a backdrop, set up a few lights, got in the mood a little bit, and I gave it a quick render. So this is what I've learned in making a pivot desk lamp. Tell me what you've learned. Let's have a chat down in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more content just like this because you'd really be helping a fella out. Stay tuned to our community tab as well to vote on the next 3D adventure. And as always, I've been Chunk, you've been you. This has been Let's Build It in Blender. I'll see you in the next video.